clickers here. Is that what you're looking for? Okay, great. So please take a minute to welcome Zach Jamignia. Did I, am I close? Not too close. Not Gimignani. too close. Oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we have your expertise here. He is the co-founder and CEO of Juice Analytics, and he's going to be talking about um, data visualization and how to make sense of it. He's going to share his perspective on how data visualization is just the beginning as we try and find insights and drive decisions from all this data. And Zach is the um, author of a new book, Data Fluency, Empowering Your Organization with Effective Data Communication. So after this, um, I'm sure that you can find out more information in his book and talk to Zach directly. Thank you. All right, and also after this is, is lunch. So I recognize I'm the last thing before lunch, so I'll talk really slow and see if you guys can make it. Um, so I did, we've sort of changed the title a little bit, but I think we're gonna cover a lot of the same stuff. And in fact, that last presentation was a great, the conversation about collaboration and bringing people, consumers into it is a great lead up to some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today. So um, do we have any fans of Dr. Oz in this room? So if you're a, if you're a physician, you're probably not a fan of him. Um, on the other hand, he has 3.4 million viewers on a, I don't know if this is daily, weekly, I'm not, I don't follow the show, but you have all these people who are following what he's saying, and at the same time, he's, he's out there pitching products that a lot of people who are familiar with data and the medical evidence feel like he should not be pushing those things. And that's, that's really an example of something that I will get into and talk about, the kind of gap that exists in, in how people work with data. So um, we're, we're all probably very familiar with this concept that we're in this world now where data is kind of the language of how we communicate, how we understand our world. Um, you know, we have big data, we have infographics we saw earlier today, we have, um, you know, people with watches that are tracking their heartbeats. So we're all, we're gathering this data trying to understand our world and at the same time, um, Really, there aren't that many people who I would call um, who, are, who are terribly savvy with the data, fluent in the language of data, and able to communicate the data. And that's really um, the challenge that I'm going to talk about today. If you think about that problem, um, one of the ways that we, we kind of lay it out is to say, um, if we were to sort of try to understand where we are in progress of using all the data that we're collecting, if you look at it on one axis, we have the sense of, of kind of how, how well are we gathering insights and making sense of data. And then on the other axis across here, you could say how many people are actually getting use from and benefiting from all of those insights. So, um, you know, the situation looks, uh, and, and hopefully this is familiar to you guys, to, to us it looks like this, where if this really steep decline from a small group of people who get a lot of value out of data to the majority of people who don't get very much information out of the data. So we look a little closer at that. Um, you know, there are, uh, this woman on the, on the left is, is probably an analyst who understands data, who can make sense of it herself, who can um, draw insights and take some action on that information. And then there's, the, then there's everyone else. Then there's the people who are um, nurses in hospitals, uh, customer service reps, maybe the people that you guys send in a carefully crafted Excel report to, and they don't open that report or download the attachment. You've probably had that experience. I have. So, you know, that's, there's this huge population of people who are not getting any value from the data. So that's kind of the bad news. And then, the good news and what I want to talk about today is, is kind of that there is an opportunity, I think, to create a lot of value out of that data. In fact, more than we might actually think if we can um, really start to involve more people in the conversation around data. And that's, so the challenge is, can we build this ladder? Can, what can we do to make it so that all those other people can start to engage with data and make some sense from it? What I want to, um, the real point I want to focus on today is that ultimately the solution for accomplishing that, 
to me is about um, inserting people into the equation again. So less of viewing, less of the kind of fixation that we have on, on using machines to generate more analyses and, and push that out in higher volume and more focus on the consumers of that information. What can they get out of it? Um, how can they bring their own creativity to that information and make some sense of it? Even if it isn't you know, machine learning type data, can they make sense of, of small data? It's also about less, less of the kind of one-way broadcast that occurs a lot where information is pushed out to a broad audience and more of a, a two-way dialogue and a conversation that can occur uh, with that data. So it's really about, it's about people and having them more involved in the, in the data analysis food chain, in effect. So it's something we call people first data, and, that, and I want to talk a little bit about kind of how, how you can accomplish that. Um, and it, sort of, it starts with, I think, good questions, as a lot of things do. So it starts with asking the question of why would that data be useful to that audience? What, what, how does it fit into their world? Um, who are the people who can get involved in that conversation to add value to that conversation? So the, um, in the previous presentation, the idea of, of having people from a focus group come up and engage with information, you know, that's, that's bringing in the people who actually understand what's happening on the ground and, and, and engaging them in the data. And then how can the data have an impact? How can you take some action based on that data? So I'm going to take, take each of those questions and, and give you a few examples of, of the types of kind of good and bad things that, can, that are going on around that. And, and the first one is kind of why, why can that, that data be useful? And to date, it's, we really started from this place of having a lot of information, general information without a very clear purpose. And I would encourage you guys to think about what is the purpose whenever you're delivering data? So. Um, this is, this is Tableau. There are a lot of tools out there that you guys might use, starting with Excel, that are general purpose tools for, for analyzing data, um, making use of that. And these tools are getting more powerful all the time. Uh, on the other hand, the way I view it is that, you know, it, it's a little bit like these tools are like if you went to a restaurant and they said, well, you can go back in the kitchen and build it and make anything you want. And that's great if, that's, if, if you're a chef and that's what you want to do, but for, the, for people who want to make some sense of it and have a great dining experience, you know, that's, these types of tools are very general purpose and they don't get to the point. Now, if we look at kind of the direction that a lot of things are going, we can start to look to mobile applications and all that has occurred um, in that environment where there's a lot more sense of with mobile applications that everything that you have on your phone, it has a purpose, it has a reason for being there, and it's very good at what it does. So that's the kind of mindset of shifting from something that does everything to, to being very clear about what you do. And um, so, you know, Apple has figured that out, and in fact what they've done recently is they partnered with IBM and taken that same type of thinking and transferred it into the enterprise space. So historically you have CRM systems and ERP systems and tools that do a lot of things that try to gather everything together and accomplish everything. Um, Apple and, and IBM are creating these very purposeful applications. They're, they're focused on specific industries, healthcare in particular. They focus on very specific use cases and then they solve for those things really, really well. So that's the kind of transition that we're starting to see in being purposeful. The second question is, is who can be, who can contribute value to that data? So instead of assuming that we're just going to take information and, and broadcast it, how can we start to collaborate and bring in the conversation from all the people who, who see that data? Um, and traditionally, you have dashboards that look like this, and maybe some of the reports that, that you guys put together that are really set up to take all the information you've gathered and put it in one place and tell somebody what the answer is. And if you're the, you're the expert, that's kind of where you you're probably feel comfortable starting the conversation. 
But if you end the conversation, if that's the end of the conversation or as far as you go, I think you're leaving a lot of value out there. So, you know, trying to move beyond this idea of, you know, this is the, this is the story, this is the end of the story, to starting to move to things that are more collaborative. So, um, in our business, we use this tool called Slack, which is kind of a virtual water cooler, and this, so it's a, it's a social environment where everyone comes together, has conversations about specific topics. Um, it's a great place to um, share ideas and come up with answers together. And there are a lot of these tools that are starting to bring together people and, and create that collaborative environment. Um, and then if, if you guys, if anyone has kids of a certain age, and I do, Minecraft is probably pretty familiar to you, where Minecraft I thought was a great example of, of changing the way people think about um, video games. Instead of saying, here's a story and now you can go out there and you can play this game, Minecraft gives a lot more power to the end user. It creates an environment where people, kids can work together and they can um, build their own world and build their own games and, and construct a world around that. So that sort of is, is, I think, provides some great models of thinking about encouraging collaboration and some of this is starting to transfer into the analytics space where there are, there are tools that allow you to analyze the data but then capture the insights that you see in the data and start a conversation based on that. So the insight you might find um, is really just the starting point and then having other people contribute and think about and add to that um, insight is kind of how people move along to actually taking a decision. So um, the final question is about how do, you, how do you understand kind of how people work and move beyond just have providing them information and understanding how you guide them into actually doing something with that data. Um, this could be really hard. I think, you know, um, this is probably familiar to you. It's very familiar to us with a lot of our clients, <laughs> this world of um, a consultant working with their client and the, you know, the first quarter they deliver a deck and it's 20 tight pages of clear information and then the client asks a few more questions and then the next quarter that deck starts to balloon into 40 pages and on and on it goes until there's a giant pile of information that get, that's getting delivered and lost in all that effort that, that consultants and researchers go through to pull that information together is you know, what are you going to do about it? What is the action that you're going to try to drive people to? And so, if you look at what Google is doing with Inbox, so they're starting to think about your, your mail, and instead of thinking about your mail as a giant pile of information that, that's gone back and forth between people, they're starting to transform that to say, those, a lot of your mail is actually a thing that you should do something about. It's an action. It's, it's, uh, it's something you should be reminded of or, do, or, or something you should check off. So they're starting to blend those two things together with the Google Inbox application, where you have your, you have your inbox, but also those things transform into actions and things that you, that you should do something about. Which kind of brings us back around to, so I showed the Dr. The Dr. Oz, where, which has this kind of Dr. Oz is broadcasting to an audience about things that he believes and is pushing a lot of information out there. Um, now, in, in total contrast to that is this site, HealthTap, which is a community where patients and physicians can come together. Patients come with the issues that they have and the questions that they have, and then the conversation can start to occur between physicians who have specialties in certain areas and the questions that the patients have. And what's really interesting about, about this community is, is you're starting that dialogue, you're having that collaboration, and then last, you, lastly, you're taking, there's action that, that they want to drive out of that. So a physician can create a checklist for a patient. So you're really moving things far beyond that sense of just pushing a lot of information out into the world. So, you know, those are a lot of kind of elaborate examples and advanced examples of those types of things that are going on and it, not all of us can go build ourselves a Google inbox or something of that nature. But the thing I would ask of you guys is that when you do take data and start to communicate it to an audience, think of some of these questions. Why should somebody care about what you're telling them? How can you engage those, that audience in a way where they might be able to bring value back into the data 
and then how can they act on that stuff? And I think if we start to change our mindset in that way, we can bring a lot more value out of the data that's being created. <laughs> Questions? Thank you. At first, um, we use Slack too. It's Excellent. awesome. We yeah, love it. It's completely changed, changed our culture. Yeah. Um, I also agree with you on Tableau as an excellent tool for the analysts. They're trying to navigate the data and find their story, but right. is not super effective for us in kind of in delivery to, to clients. Have you seen anything else in that spot? Well, yes. <laughs> so this is this is so what a lot of what we've done in our company is essentially. These types of philosophies of trying to reach people is what we're essentially building a solution that does that. Now I could talk to you about other types of things, but I think that what we've done essentially is, is most focused on helping not just tell the story, but help people have those conversations around, around the story. So pitch free environment, but nevertheless, that's the answer I gotta get, that's the honest answer. If I can interpret one of the things you said, uh, there's more to usefulness than perhaps just a consolidation of the data. I mean, you showed like the, the infographic, and a lot of times we look at that as like a great way to synthesize data. Maybe it's a bit of a mashup, but yeah. would it be wrong to say that um, there has to be some sort of emotive connection that's part of uh, the delivery, not just having it all concise in one little spot? Yeah, I think the I think the emotional and the making it personal to people is is super important. And the reason I titled this Beyond Data Visualization is I think the data visualization has been viewed as a way to make things accessible and, and often trying to make it emotional. But but that's really just, you know, it, it's when we sit down and have a conversation about it and I hear about your context and what's important to you, and then bring the right data to your your situation and understand the limitations of the data, all that, all those stages beyond just being aware of what the data is, is what I think helps people really buy in. People don't buy in just because you've given them some overwhelming ev data evidence. They buy in when they feel like they've had their say and there are other people who have, their peers also buy in. There are a lot, there's a lot more complexity to getting people to actually buy into what they're seeing and take some action on it. Got it. Thanks.